Have you ever watched movies about the future? If you have, you will notice that a majority of them show the same future in different ways. The movies show that there was a major change that happened in the world, and it was because of either a great war. After the nuclear war, you both will leave. Nuclear war? It doesn't have to be a war! Or some climate change event. Something consistent that is shown within all these movies is that there is a separation of classes. The movies show the future with a major separation between the rich and the poor. In their future, they show the wealthy living in beautiful, well-kept homes and neighborhoods, eating filet mignon and drinking fine wine while the poor live in slums or housing projects, and they have little food and no rights. The rich are always well taken care of, and they of course live within their control structure and don't want to break the rules because they don't ever want to go into the slums, or what they call the red zones, where the poor people live. I challenge you to watch a majority of the movies about the future, and you'll see that this is the reality that they will show you. Why is that? It's because it's a form of mental conditioning, preparing the masses for the world that they are creating. In the United States, a country that has walked in pride of being a free nation with free markets, a truly capitalistic society, totally opposite and contrary to communist nations like Russia and China. They have been introducing socialist ideas gradually for decades. But ever since the Great Recession, the population of what the world knows as the greatest capitalist nation, this population has slowly been conditioned to accept socialism while never really calling it so. This has been gradual and intentional because it correlates with the future that movies have been conditioning and foreshadowing. In socialism and communism, there isn't any middle class. It's just the rich and the poor. In America today, Biden speaks of the class system often but he doesn't say it with rich versus poor. He distinguishes it through two different terms, the wealthy and the worker class. Working people were struggling to make it long before the pandemic arrived. Big corporations and the very wealthy were doing very well before the pandemic. He calls out the wealthy class and says that they need to pay their fair share. Big corporations and super wealthy have to start paying their fair share of taxes. All I'm asking is you pay your fair share. Pay your fair share. And he says he's making all the changes for the working class, who are poor. The poor working class don't even realize that he is talking badly about them. And all the policies being put in place are not to help them be more financially independent, but it's actually the opposite. It's locking them into their groups so that they never can escape. The rich will also be locked in, as long as they play by the rules, and the poor will always be poor. The American dream is gone, and the masses don't realize it yet. Now for many paying attention, this truth has been seen and known for many years. But it is at this time where we are seeing it all come together. The world is being locked into their class system before the world resets. It's important that you have a good understanding of what is happening so that you are not directed into the economic system of legal slavery. I want to speak to what is happening away from the mind-controlling propaganda so that you are ready and prepared for the world that is coming. Let's begin. Okay, so before I start, socialism is a topic that everyone needs to have a basic level of understanding on. In the past, I made a video on socialism that I recommend that everyone watches so that you can be informed on the world that they are creating and mentally conditioning us for. Like I explained in that video, in full out socialism, human beings are capital goods. That video will explain that term more in depth. In socialism, humans are owned and controlled by the state, their government. The government is running all the businesses and controlling the enterprises and responsible for bringing in the consumption goods, which is the money. The government is responsible for acquiring the money and resources, and then they distribute the wealth to the citizens of the country. That may be very technical to digest and understand through this video, which is why I recommend watching the full video on the subject. But basically what it is, is government rule 
over our complete way of life. And the rules are different up to a certain extent for the rich and the poor. And all that we are seeing now is a preparation for this reality. You need to be aware of it because they are not explaining it. For instance, with this three and a half trillion dollar infrastructure deal that they are pushing. Senate Democrats are now scaling back a proposal to make banks share more account information with the IRS. It's a new plan to try to crack down on wealthy people who are dodging taxes. <clears throat> In essence, start tracking how much money they're depositing and withdrawing from their accounts, especially at the end of the year, and then compare that to their tax filings. Every account with total annual deposits or withdrawals of $600 would face these rules. But that provision just got a ton of pushback from the banking industry and from Republicans who say it just raises significant privacy concerns. So Democrats are changing the threshold to $10,000. CNBC's Elon Moy now, why the change? Well, Chef, Democrats are basically acknowledging that their original plan went too far. It is hard to make the case that you need information about bank accounts with as little as $600 in order to crack down on the rich people who aren't paying their taxes. So this new plan, as you mentioned, would raise that threshold for reporting to the IRS to $10,000 in annual transactions. And any money in the bank from your wages, Social Security, or other federal benefits aren't included since the IRS actually already has that information. Now, two powerful Democratic senators are spearheading this change. Ron Wyden, the head of the Finance Committee, and Senator Elizabeth Warren. The White House has blessed this new approach as well. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said, the proposal reflects the administration's strong belief that we should zero in on those at the top of the income scale who don't pay the taxes they owe while protecting American workers. But Republicans are still railing against this, even with the higher threshold. They point to privacy concerns, compliance costs for the banks, and the risk that this could trigger audits for those at the bottom instead of those at the top. It's a stupid idea that I hear from Iowans all the time, that they don't want the peering eyes of the IRS snooping on them, the middle class, is going to be hurt as a result of this. Democrats believe this proposal could raise hundreds of billions of dollars in unpaid taxes. And Shep, they're counting on that money to pay for all those big spending plans. Understand, this is not about the taxes. This agenda is all about informing the general public that they will be watching and recording all that we say and do and making sure that we are complying within their system. In order to control a society, they need to be aware of all that we do. When you make the government in charge of knowing what is happening with all of our money, it is all about socialist control. But that is just the start of this all. It's important to understand that this is not just about America, but about the world. When Biden has been making his plea for the wealthy to pay their fair share, he speaks to the unknowing American public as if it's all about this country. But Biden is helping usher in the framework for the world government that will be built when the Great Reset begins. That's another video you should watch if you have not done so. What Biden has not publicly told the country, though he is about to announce this soon, is that he, along with close to 140 other countries around the world, have agreed to a global tax rate. They're working on a tax for the whole world. In the meantime, IMF and World Bank annual meetings are kicking off in Washington against the backdrop of a major deal changing global tax rules. Kayla Tausche is here. She's got the new details on this. Kayla, good morning. Good morning, Becky. That's right. 136 nations have negotiated a sweeping overhaul of global tax rules and reached a two-part agreement setting a 15% global minimum tax on companies of a certain size. That would raise an estimated $150 billion from multinationals. And the second pillar taxing 25% of profits above a 10% profit margin for large companies doing business in countries where they don't have a physical presence. And there's an agreement in principle to roll back existing taxes that penalize big companies like Facebook, Apple, and Alphabet overseas and block new so-called digital services taxes on those companies until 2024. At the end of the month, October 29th, like all presidents before him, Biden will be meeting the Pope in Rome before the G20 summit to make the global push and plead to the world for the world transition, pushing for a global tax, 
action on climate change, ending the COVID-19 pandemic, and what they call caring for the poor. Late October and early November, President Biden heads to Europe for the G20 and climate meetings. And today the White House confirmed what we've been reporting all week that the president and first lady will soon visit the Vatican. In just over two weeks, President Joe Biden and Pope Francis will meet face to face. And according to the White House, the president and Dr. Biden will discuss working together on efforts grounded in respect for fundamental human dignity, including ending the COVID-19 pandemic, tackling the climate crisis and caring for the poor. President Biden, who has been described by his press secretary as a devout Catholic, routinely attends mass. But whether he should receive Holy Communion has been hotly debated. The nation's second ever Catholic president says he not only supports abortion, but also is actively working to expand access. You must understand that when they talk about caring for the poor, this is a play on words, introducing their taxing system. It's redistributing wealth, taking the money from the rich and giving it to the poor. They are moving very rapidly towards changing our world. But because they play the game of words with the general public, the public thinks that these government officials are making these changes for them. That the leaders of the world are creating this new tax system so that they can protect us from the rich. But what the general public doesn't realize is that while they are doing this in the name of the poor, it is actually in service to the rich. The further we move into the system, the less opportunity anyone will ever have of moving out of it. The goal is for the rich to stay rich and the poor to stay poor. But they push it on the public from a mouthpiece that says that they are doing it for the people. But if you look closely, you can already see the changes being implemented. Like in reference to the mandates, what the general public does not realize is that their economic class in society is being locked in place by rules, establishing who they are and what they can do. Here in the United States and across the world, there are new mandates about receiving their solution. Though people are looking at it as mandates, what they don't realize is that this is the building blocks of the control structure put on the world and the separation of the classes. I want you to think, with all the mandates and controls happening and being forced on the world, do you know what the common denominator is of all those that are forced to comply? Yes, everyone forced to comply are employees the working class, those that are tied into the system by labor and wealth. They do not make the rules, they just comply with them. Most don't realize that these mandates don't apply to the very wealthy, those who are at the top, who are the employers. I mean, how could they? They choose what they want to do. Think about it. Those that control their own companies have a choice. They're not mandated to do anything. In order for them to fly or to travel, they have their own airplanes and airports that do not restrict them in the same manner. They don't shop for their own groceries or other items. Others do that for them. They own the restaurants that make these rules. Or they have their own private chefs. They don't need to go to concerts. They bring in the performers themselves to their own private events, like they did with this guy. That was weird. But you see what I'm getting at? Is that these mandates around the world are not rules to slow down the spread but there are rules put in place in order to divide the world by class and let everyone know what level they are in. Even the athletes and celebrities are in the working class and they are making it known. Those at the top of the pyramid are not under the same rules as those at the bottom. They are making the rules. And all these other issues that are happening right now are just another part to it that will not get better, but exponentially worse until the divide is complete and permanent. When listening to the news, you have to be able to think past what they are telling you and look at the bigger picture and where things are going. All the issues that they are telling us about the supply chain and inflation are not about short inconveniences that will be occurring in our current times and near future. It's about the dividing of the world and driving it to change. Let's cover the supply chain issue first. And as we mentioned, the Biden administration faces another crisis amid a growing backlog in the global supply chain. The president announced new measures with ports and major shippers to ease the strain. This is across the board commitment to going to 24 seven. This is a big first step in speeding up the movement of materials and goods through our supply chain. 
But with consumer demand growing, factories struggling to keep up, and a shortage of workers from the ports to truck drivers, there is little relief in sight. We travel to the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, where 40% of all cargo goods enter the U.S. to see for ourselves. Here off the coast of Southern California, on the waters of the country's busiest ports, record numbers of container ships sitting idle. Right now in the port of Long Beach, there are more than 60 container ships anchored here waiting to unload. Normally, there wouldn't be any of them waiting, and those are just the ones you can see. Way out in the Pacific, there are dozens more. On board these ships, that couch you order, computers, refrigerators, medical supplies, and toys, hoping to reach Santa in time for Christmas. Martha, I have never seen anything like this. This is actually one of the smaller ships. The largest ships in service today can carry up to 24,000 container units. And what would that mean in terms of goods? That could fill three shopping malls. Long Beach ports empty containers contributing to a shortage around the world, dramatically increasing the cost of shipping. From China to the U.S., roughly $1,300 to more than $16,000. What took an average of 41 days now takes 75. Adding to strained operations at the ports, there's labor shortages at every step in the supply chain, from the longshoremen to warehouse workers to what could be the most dire, a need for tens of thousands of truck drivers nationwide. We are already being conditioned to expect lower inventory on the shelves. Going over what the media are saying are the problems is counterproductive. It should be recognized that this is all planned and engineered for multiple reasons. First one, among others, is to destroy the smaller to mid-sized businesses that depend on the supply chain. It used to take about two to three days. Now, it's sometimes it's taking a month. I even had a client that was waiting almost a year to get her furniture. All these products in inventory that can't get into the stores are severely limiting businesses. Businesses cannot stay open when there is no inventory. The bigger companies, though they are affected, they can weather the storm better because they have the money to charter their own shipping containers. They have the power to pass on the higher cost to their customers. Look at this article from the Wall Street Journal. Biggest U.S. retailers charter private cargo ships to sail around port delays. Home Depot, Costco, and Walmart resort to private charters and push to stock shelves for holiday shoppers. It says some of the biggest U.S. retailers by revenue are among the companies that are paying for their own chartered ships as part of wider plans to mitigate the disruptions, a costly and unattainable option for most companies. Some of the chains are passing along these added costs by raising prices for the shoppers. You see, this is something that will be seen across the board and with everything from clothing, electronics, and most importantly, food being harder to receive it will be a lot harder to stock the shelves. And when you have low inventory along with high demand, this is an easy to see cause for inflation. Now let's talk about inflation. You probably noticed a lot of what we buy is getting more expensive. The Labor Department reported Thursday that consumer prices jumped 5% over the past year. That's the highest inflation rate in the U.S. since 2008. It means Americans are seeing higher prices on things like food, clothes, and lumber. What is inflation? Inflation is a general increase in prices and fall in the purchasing value of money. I've been speaking on this issue for a long time. And for those paying attention, it's easy to see that they are getting started now. Not only are prices rising because of all the extreme money printing they have done over the past decade, but if you couple it with the effects of this engineered supply chain shortage, the world will soon see that their money will not be able to keep up with the rising cost of everything. I mean, look at what's happening with gas prices. The data from AAA, gas prices are higher than they have been in seven years and rising. Look at these numbers. Last year, the national average for a gallon of regular was $2.18, and now it's just shy of $3.30. That's a 50% jump in just 12 months. In some parts of the country, we're paying as much as $5 a gallon, like New York City. And to make matters worse, 
Analysts say they expect heating bills to rise. CNBC Seema Modi on the pain of the pump as winter nears. It's crazy. You shouldn't really be paying $5 for gas, you know, it's, it's a lot. At this Midtown Manhattan gas station, customers we spoke to say they've got sticker shock with gas in the Big Apple topping $5 a gallon. I'm concerned because, you know, I drive for a living. I'm a cab driver. I'm very surprised. I thought that gas prices would have gone up because the economy's recovering. I didn't think they'd go up this fast and this high. For the average consumer, this is dramatic. A trifecta of supply chain issues, bottlenecks, as well as higher demand after months of lockdown is creating the perfect storm. Like she said, all these factors are creating the perfect storm. It's perfect for them. And when gas prices go up, that is just another reason for higher inflation. This is what is happening with our food as well. This was a new segment produced six months ago in April. Now with price hikes at the supermarket, Procter & Gamble announcing it will join several other major companies and raise costs on popular products over the next few months. Gio Benitez joins us now with what's behind it and what consumers can do. Gio, good morning. Hey, Michael, good morning to you. Yeah, in this pandemic, Americans were already spending more on food and household items. But now, even with these companies making so much more money last year, we are still seeing these prices go up. Thought you were spending more at the grocery store than ever before? Well, brace yourself. There are even more major price hikes on the horizon. Procter & Gamble announcing they are raising prices on a variety of goods, including senior, female, and baby care. Editor Kimberly Clark, a company whose products include Huggies, diapers, and Scott toilet tissue, also announcing they will raise prices starting in June. It's a chain reaction. Once they lift their prices, that pretty much gives everyone license to, to do the same thing. The Consumer Price Index, which measures how much consumers pay for everyday items, jumped 2.6% over last year. That's the biggest increase in three years. It's causing ripple effects in the grocery aisles, everything from Cheerios to peanut butter going up in cost. You see, what many don't realize is that inflation is just a huge way of taxing the poor. It is an invisible tax. Ask yourself, are you paying more for food and gasoline? Are home and rent prices going up and property taxes with them? Are cars more expensive? Is lumber more expensive? By reducing the value and purchasing power of our currency, the public is dealing with an invisible tax that they do not recognize, but they absolutely feel. Now again, be clear, this does not affect the rich as it affects the poor. The working class depends on wages that doesn't rise in pace with inflation. If you are making 40K, but the cost of everything keeps rising every month, that 40K salary could feel like 20K, especially when the government is taxing it as well. But here's the kicker for the rich. The rich are able to move right through inflation because as cost of goods are going up, they are making what looks like higher profits. You see, inflation is separating the rich from the poor like never before and it will continue to get worse until it's completely permanent. Now, let me just add this in here, because as I have been alluding to in many of these videos, is that this is all about replacing our financial system away from fiat currencies like the dollar. Everyone around the world are feeling these inflation pressures, and these challenges are not looking to go away, but accelerate. As this is happening, you know what else is rising? Well, there are a few things but two things I will emphasize, and that's the price of Bitcoin and alternative cryptocurrencies, and also US Treasury bond yields. So let's cover both. Bitcoin is the main hedge against the fiat currency system because it looks to be the main store of value for the coming world economy. It may not be the world currency, but it will be what all assets will be valued by. As the price of Bitcoin climbs, it is showing the value of the dollar and other fiat currencies are reducing. They can distract all they want, saying that the recent climb in Bitcoin prices is all about their new ETFs. Coincidentally, having it come out at the same time when inflation is spiking high. But the truth is that this is all about the dollar losing its place as the world reserve currency. If the dollar was strong and sound, no one would be paying attention to Bitcoin. You have to understand that. Now let's talk about bond yields. As inflation rises, as supply chain shortages increase, bond yields are rising. 
And what that means is that countries and investors are unloading debt. Yields drop when investors lend money. And then they rise when people want their money back and selling the debt. And that is what is happening in the United States. We are seeing a weekly climb in the yields of the United States Treasury bonds because holding an inflated dollar is not looking as safe of an investment as it once was. So, I mean, because our financial system is a global system, other countries, China most notably, buy U.S. Treasuries with an expectation of return. If the value of the U.S. dollar starts falling as quickly as these numbers suggest it is, why would any country inv invest in U.S. bonds and government bonds? I mean, doesn't this threaten well, to cause, you know, a shakeup? Well, they won't. Yeah, they're going to be selling U.S. Treasuries. I mean, anybody that can connect right. these dots is going to be selling U.S. Treasuries. And the problem is there's a lot of U.S. Treasuries to be sold. You know, and they talk a lot about the shortage of goods. The real problem is the surplus of money. You see, this is all about ushering in the new financial system. What is happening is that the rich will have their supplies and inventory on the items they need because they can pay for it and the poor will be held to whatever the system can provide them. Right now with their propaganda, all of this is being sold as just some little inconvenience to the consumer, like with the White House warning households to get their pagan Christmas gifts early this year. So people, of course with their eyes closed, are just looking at the economy getting a little tighter and harder. But what they need to see and be aware of is that they are pricing the masses out and spreading the wealth gap like never before. This is the biggest wealth transfer in the history of the world. I mean, in their doctrine of the Great Reset, they literally say, you will own nothing and be happy. <laughs> we are beginning to see the Great Reset of wealth and prosperity in this world. There will be no more middle class. There will only be the rich and the poor. As Biden and the Pope speak on doing things for the poor, you must translate it as locking in the wealth of the rich while trapping the poor in slavery. Biden has been in office for a short nine or 10 months, speaking on pushing policies for the working class. But it has been the working class that has been hurt the most. This will not stop, but it is escalating. The main issue that is coming is the replacement of the dollar out of the financial system. And as it continues to escalate, you will see the value of your dollar, along with any other fiat currency that you're using, drop continuously you'll shortly see that the same food and gas that you were once able to buy two months ago is gonna cost you more today. You should understand that this inevitable event is happening sooner than you think. For me personally, I know people that are not getting prepared because they say, and I quote, they know this is going to happen, but they don't think it's gonna happen now. While all of these things are happening directly right now in front of their face. You also need to understand that world leaders like Joe Biden know exactly what it is that they are doing and what the goal is. Biden has literally spelled it out for us, though most of us just aren't paying attention. He tells us that there is a great debate about whether our system should continue to thrive or should it change to an autocratic one. He says the United States is not only being judged by the size of its military, but if they can lead. He says both China and Russia are advocates for one. This is that new world order, an autocratic system. He is speaking of it, just not spelling it out with the dollar, though this was a discussion about the debt ceiling. So you just need to place it in context to understand. But because he doesn't spell it out, the masses are left behind the curve and therefore they stay asleep. Listen to him. Um, I know Brian Moynihan knows about this as well. We are not only being measured in terms of our strength and our reliability based upon the size of our military and or the physical strength that we possess, but it's on whether or not we can function. There's a great debate going on, and I'm not exaggerating this, so all of you deal internationally. There's a great debate going on whether or not in the 21st century, in the second quarter of the 21st century, can democracies function with things moving so rapidly? And I can tell you, a couple of the folks I've had a lot of, spent a lot of time with uh, of late, Mr. Putin and Mr. Xi Jinping, they really believe that uh, autocracies are the only way forward because they can act quickly and decisively. It's not a joke. 
and we're seeing effects of this around the world. And I don't know, it's, it's, I don't know, it's understandable why the average American wouldn't understand what the consequences of this will be for American security. Okay, so you heard it. Now, again, what is the definition of an autocracy? Mr. Putin and Mr. Xi Jinping, they really believe that uh, autocracies are the only way forward because they can act quickly and decisively. It's not a joke. It is a system of government by one person with absolute power. By the way, after he alluded to this, they quickly cut him from talking and moved on to another speaker. But he told us what is being debated to come after this American system fails. This is not some unfounded conspiracy. This is intentional and leading to a whole new world. The instability and destruction that is happening and that will ensue is all planned to lead the world to the chaos so that we are led into an autocratic form of world government. They will move the world through fear and desperation into accepting this great change. Now, if you're following this ministry for a while now, none of these things happening are catching you by surprise. And because you have been proactive instead of waiting to be reactive, you should be prepared for all of this that is transpiring. Even if this is not the case, the good news is that you still have time to prepare for all of it. I make videos like this to filter through the mind control and allow critical thinking and sound thought to occur. Do not sit and wait on the world to move through the changes it has planned decades ago. You must be physically, mentally, and most importantly, spiritually prepared for the changes that are coming. The masses have tied themselves to the direction this world is heading, but if you are in Messiah Yahshua, you are not in bondage to any of it. I am a complete advocate of having supplies and resources that can help you weather the storm. But this is all about who your faith is in and that you're following him. If you believe in Yahshua and trust in him, he will get you through the storms. But you need faith. You cannot live in doubt, fear, and worry as the rest of the world moves. You must move and live with faith in him that he will guard and keep you. You must trust and know that he knows what you're up against and he will take care of you. But in order for him to do this, you must actually put your trust in him and depend on him. This is a situation that happened in Mark chapter 4 verses 35 through 41 that you should hold on to. It says, On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And the other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obeyed him? You see, they were with Messiah directly. And while he was sleeping, a storm came. They thought that because he was asleep, he was not aware and should have reacted as they did. They even cried out, Do you not care that we are perishing? showing a complete lack of faith in him. But when he was ready, he simply stood up and told the storm to be still. And the storm complied because he was in control. And guess what? He still is. He knows the storms going on in our lives. But what he wants us to do is to not be fearful, but to have faith. He wants us to trust in him and depend on him. You see, this is the kind of faith that is needed and what is being lost in the world today. We need faith in him that does not go away when times get hard and fear wants to try to sneak in. That's exactly the time that our faith needs to kick in. He wants us to trust in him at all times so that he can use us. With all the events happening, this is not a time to walk in fear, but to walk in faith. He knows the storm is coming. Of course he does. It's all about him. What he is looking for is our faith. And that's what many don't understand today that chose the world over trusting him. Today, they want faith in him to make you look weak or stupid. But literally, he is all that you have that you can depend on. 
Those that have been depending on this world are on a continuous losing streak. Following the solutions of this world, putting so much trust and faith in our leaders that they don't leave any room for Father to work in their lives. And you cannot be one of them. You must trust in him and not ask him if he cares that you are perishing, but trust him to make sure that you don't. He will not fail you. Submit to him and believe in him. He is the only play you have. Do not be part of the strong delusion that is walking straight into destruction. Be awake and be aware. Please know and believe that the only answer you have is him. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please do not forget to like and share it with others. If you have not done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Please also don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I'd like to thank all of you who support this ministry. You know who you are. Your contributions truly bless this ministry, and I'm thankful and always extremely humbled by your support. Thank you for being a blessing and following the call Yah has placed on your heart. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. Be strong, be ready, and be blessed. I love you all.